two-time Wimbledon champion Petra Kvitova laid low by familiar ups and downs, by Tim Lewis at Wimbledon, read to you by Brian Jeffrey. It was both a shock and not at all unexpected. That is how it is, and probably always be, with Petra Kvitova, the tenth seed, and Wimbledon champion in 2011 and 2014, was defeated in the third round by the Russian Ekaterina Makarova. One set down overnight, the 26-year-old Kvitova came out on Saturday afternoon with her trademark mix of the unplayable and the unfathomable and went down 7-5, 7-6. To be fair, it was a stinker of a draw for Kvitova, a real banana skin. Makarova, the world no 35, is unseeded here but a two-time Grand Slam semi-finalist and cracking doubles player who is right at home on grass. She is also everything that Kvitova is not, compact, durable, unemotional on court. In this match Kvitova hit the lion's share of winners, 26 to 12, but you do not want to know how many unforced errors she made. Well, maybe you do, it was a galling, insurmountable 43. Even the best grass court talent of her age cannot get away with that. Afterwards, Kvitova who recently split from her long-time coach, suggested that upheaval might be partly responsible for her wobbly form. In the last couple of months a lot of things happen in my life, she said. I made decisions which I still believe were right, so that's how it is. Of course, the challenge with it is that it's still up and down. The ups are not as great as maybe last year or the years before, but I still hope the ups will come soon. Kvitova's departure removes one of Serena Williams' main threats in the top half of the draw. Eugenie Bouchard went down too, beaten in straight sets by a resurgent Dominika Sibilkova, a recent winner at Eastbourne. The redoubtable Agnes Skaradwanska, the world no three, did make it through with a classy 6-3, 6-1 victory against 20-year-old Katerina Siniakova, who started the day as the youngest player in the draw. Sibilkova and Radwanska face each other next and that will be worth a watch for sure. Meanwhile, on the other side, the women's tournament remains as hard to predict as SW19's meteorology. The surprise defeat in that section of the No. 2 seed, Garbin Muguruza, the recent champion at Roland Garros and finalist here last year, has left a host of contenders perhaps feeling they can now go deep into the second week. Advertisement. There is no more Rhea Sharapova, too, of course, banned for two years for taking Meldonium, but the 2004 champion still managed to dominate Tittle Tattle at the All England Club with news that she has signed up for a two week summer course at Harvard on global strategic management. The highest earning female athlete for more than a decade clearly has no intention of letting her $300 million career earnings dribble away. On a frustrating day of bright sunshine and blobby rain showers, sometimes simultaneously, first up to make her case was the German world no four, Angelic Kerber. She raised eyebrows, possibly even her own, by beating Serena Williams to win this year's Australian Open, her first Grand Slam. The petite lefty has Wimbledon previous two, making a run to the semi-final in 2012. There have been complaints from some women, specifically the Williams sisters, that male players have tended to hog the show courts in the first week. It was hard to argue, though, with Kerber's match against her compatriot Karina Withoff being stuck on court no two. The one and only time the pair have met before was at last year's Wimbledon and Kerber double bageled her, 6-0, 6-0 the most comprehensive indignity of the 21-year-old Withoft's short career. Twelve months on, this third-round encounter was immediately a very different story. The 27-year-old Kerber came through 7-6, 6-1, but it could easily have gone Withoft's way. If Withoft is only Germany's tenth best female player, then that country sure has some tennis system. The decisive period was the first set tie-break which ended 13-11 in Kerber's favor. Both players had set points and who was serving seemed to make little odds. At 9-9 the umpire had to remind both players to change ends, they were like boxers who had become punch drunk and did not know which corner was theirs. 
It was a cracking match actually, a clash between the relentless attack of Withoft and Kerber's impenetrable defense. Technically it lasted a little more than 90 minutes, but it played out over four hours, with two breaks for rain. Kerber prevailed but she might need the more adventurous spirit that she showed in the second set if she is to match or improve on her 2012 performance. Meanwhile, on center court, under the roof, Romania's Simona Halep, the world no five, faced Kiki Burtons from the Netherlands, seeded 28. The middle Saturday is when Wimbledon invites a selection of sporting greats to look on from the Royal Box. An announcer promised us England's football heroes, long pause, some incredulous looks, before continuing from the 1966 World Cup. Those chaps received an enthusiastic ovation, though the loudest cheers were saved for David Beckham, and his mum, and then Halep and Burtons took the stage. On paper, this looked like it could be fag paper tight and so it threatened to be, at least in the opening set. Both players are 24 and both know what it takes to reach the business end of a Grand Slam. Burton's, indeed, was fresh from a career-best semi-final at this year's Roland Garros and has won more matches than any other player on tour in 2016. But this was a less engrossing match than Kerber with Thoft. Halep and Burton's have similar playing styles. Punchy serves backed up by power hitting from the baseline, no obvious chinks rare artistic flourishes. But Halep, yesterday anyway, does everything with just a fraction more consistency. It was enough to see her come through 6-4, 6-3 and set her up for a hard to call fourth round against the American no-9 seed Madison Keys, who beat France's allies Cornet in three sets.